this is a complete transformation. Schools are moving in the right direction with the newest and latest curriculum and structural models, with more high school options than ever before, with new and renovated buildings. Uh, we want we want Bridgeport to be an education leader. We just don't. We just don't want to come up to state standard. We want to exceed the state standard, and we want people to look to us for educational leadership. And when you got here, that is obviously you found a situation that maybe was it worse off than you thought it was, or were you prepared when you walked in the you door? Know, in honesty, and you be prepared. You know, in all, after doing Chicago and Philadelphia, and obviously New Orleans, after working in uh, Haiti. Uh, and in Chile after the earthquakes, believe me, uh, uh, I was not surprised by what I found here. But let me point out what I found, uh, and I shouldn't say I was surprised about this because, you know, I'm kind of a veteran superintendent. Uh, there are great people in the city who have been committed to education for the longest of times. And sometimes as a superintendent, your job is to remove the obstacles to bringing them into the schools and to working with them to make the schools better. You're talking about parents, people in the community? I'm talking about community-based organizations, parents, faith-based organizations, uh, school reformers. I mean, this is a community that has always been interested in the quality of education. But sometimes we, we, we uh, isolate schools in their own community. And what we're trying to do is to break our isolation. Uh, case in point is the universities. All of our high schools are now have partnerships with universities that allow our students when they enter their junior year and uh, to scale at the senior year to take college uh, courses, university courses, community college courses for dual credit, early college, early graduation, uh, tuition free, Sacred Heart, Bridgeport, Fairfield, Housatonic. Uh, uh, you know, we're also working to establish a similar relationship with UConn possibly St. Vincent's. You see, these are partners that have always been there. We're just taking full advantage of them. And you speak of involving members of the community, and I have to ask you, just from, I, I got to look at the charter revision, how it's going to appear on the ballot, and I'm someone who's pretty astute and right. follows things that go on, and I kind of had a hard time figuring it out. Thoughts on this and, and how it's being posed to folks, and your uh, the feedback you've received as someone who's out here marching and involved with people who will vote. Well, you know, my position as a superintendent is to not take a position on governance. But I will tell you this, we have a mayor who really loves schools, it's public schools, realizes that the key to the city's revitalization, the city's growth, uh, the key to having a dynamic city is to having a, a dynamic school system that provides all children with access to superior educational programs. And basically what the mayor has said is, look, uh, you know, <laughs> I have to run for election every four years. Uh, uh, give the mayor uh, the responsibility uh, for making uh, f for the schools, uh, and uh, and and hold the mayor accountable uh, if the schools if the schools do not improve. That said and done, I mean I, I'm kind of stating the mayor's position. Now there are obviously people who feel that uh, that this is somehow a circumvention of local control. But at the end of the day, you know I see too many cities where the city where the mayor's because they have no responsibility and they have no influence over their schools, in effect, sometimes and ignore and neglect the schools. I think what this mayor has said is, if uh, I will take political responsibility uh, if I have uh, the, the ability to go in and to uh, help transform the schools. I think that's the position. But insofar as I'm concerned, these schools are going to get better regardless of what happens. Mayoral control, no mayoral control. There's nothing preventing, uh, there's nothing that's going to stop this reform movement, that's going to stop this transformation. And the mayor's going to support continued reform uh, uh, in the Bridgeport public school system, regardless of whether the, uh, the uh, charter is approved or not approved. And as far as the wording, are you comfortable with that? Oh, you know, I, I'm not even paying attention to that. You know, my job is to make the schools better. When I went to Haiti, uh, you know, my, you know, I couldn't bring about a political transformation of what was going on there. My job was to present the country, to present the international uh, community with options for building a functioning publicly funded school system that could be implemented uh, in, an, in an underdeveloped country. You know, when I took over New Orleans in, in the wake of Katrina, you know, you know, I didn't care about the governance issues, who ran the schools, who didn't run the school. All I know is I was tasked with literally opening, building 22 campuses finding 500 teachers to serve like, uh, 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 you know, to serve uh, uh, 16,000 kids in a matter of 90 days. So for me, the mission is to make the schools better. 
uh, local governance, uh, the politics of, of control, new controls to schools, that's to be left for the political decision makers, not me as superintendent. I'm going to let you go in one second, yeah. but really quick, one of the other issues that there was certainly no uh, shortage of opinion on was the uh, state takeover of the Board of Ed. Now that that is over, now that that's in the past, a quick assessment of, of how that worked. What, what do we gain? What did we lose? What all things even well again you know the uh, you know the community felt that the state takeover actually it was less than abdication because basically the board voted to invite the state in because they were so frustrated at their inability to basically take you know to take responsibility uh, to move the schools forward but you know I, you know I'm agnostic uh, we have a board it's a it's a locally elected board uh, uh, the three state appointed board members who resided in Bridgeport all ran for the board and were all elected. In fact, Jackie Kelliger, the current chairman, was the top vote getter. Uh, so, you know, so I think the public pretty much uh, communicated their support and their and, and their uh, pleasure with the school reform movement when they elected the three state appointed board members who were uh, Bridgeport residents to the board. So, you know, this is a board we can work with. Uh, you know, everybody who ran for the board, I think, ran for the right reasons. Uh, it's important that they work together uh, to uh, support the reforms and to move reform forward. There, there, nothing's been suggested or there's been no indication by the behavior of any of the board members that they are going to keep that from happening. So, you know, for me, it's not for me to pick who my bosses are. It's for me to do the job. So at the end of the day, I, I, I'm convinced that with this board, we'll continue to advance school reform, uh, uh, irregardless of what happens in November with the charter. Bridgeport is not turning back. The community wants high-quality schools. The mayor wants high-quality schools. Every one of the board members, regardless of their politics, wants high-quality schools, and that's what they're going to get. And my job is to do my job and to leave the politicking to others.